In Hillsboro, you'd be hard-pressed to find a crossroad without a historical marker on it. From Okanichi Village to the Airmount House and the Burwell School, this small town serves as a beacon of historical context for our state. Today, the story of Hillsboro is being forged by a thriving creative scene. I'm E.B. with Our State Magazine, and I'm traveling to North Carolina's smaller towns to let the locals lead me around. As a columnist for the Washington Post and a contributing writer for the New York Times and Our State Magazine, Stephen Petro finds inspiration and fellowship in this creative community. Today, he'll be my guide as we go around town. Welcome to Hillsboro. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I brought you a little gift from Cup of Joe. Stop. Homemade blueberry scone. Delicious. Oh my gosh, you had me at homemade. Thank you. Welcome to downtown Hillsboro. Thank you, know, you. It's not a big place, but it's really special. And this is a town of 6,000 people with a great long history. But we have a bookstore. We have our own radio station. That's super cool. We have Panchuto, which is a six times nominated James Beard restaurant. I mean, we're a tiny town and we have all these gems. But really what brought me here and has kept me here are my friends. It's just incredible the, the kind of community that's here and it, it really doesn't exist so much in North Carolina and America anymore. I love it. This is the historic district. It is a beautiful place and the homes are protected. I love all of the fresh flowers that I'm just seeing everywhere, like all of these yeah, the beautiful natural... Yeah, the and the dogwoods are out right now. Oh. And uh, so my house is the Florence Elkins house, gotcha. right here. This one. And I'm just going to run in and get Zoe, my Jack Russell Terrier. I'm so excited to meet Zoe. The river walk winds along the Eno River and connects Hillsboro to the Mountains to Sea Trail. And so how long has the trail been here? Is this a new addition to the city? It is, it's been here four or five years, and I have to say, it feels like it's changed everything. It's certainly changed my routine. In the morning, there's joggers, there's bike riders, of course there are the dog walkers. I have to thank the town leaders and the Arts Council for um, sort of thinking all this through. Yeah. I call them visionaries. Where are we headed to next? So I think we're gonna drop Zoe off. Okay. And then we're gonna head to John Bierman's studio. And John is an amazing painter, and I really want you to meet him. Steven. John. Hi. This is Evie. John. Evie. So nice to meet so you, nice John. So nice to meet you, too. Come on in. Bro, yeah. great to see you. Let me show you my studio. Thank you for having us. Here's my new studio, Stephen. What do you think? Wow, Evie, it's amazing, isn't it? This is this beautiful. And this painting, I think it's somewhere nearby, isn't it? It is. It's at Francis Mays' uh, property just north of town here. How did you wind up here in Hillsboro? After a 30-year career up in New York City, my marriage ended and I came down here and started my life over again. And honestly, it was not what I expected to do. It was a terrible year, but once I landed here, that was the beginning of my recovery, honestly. Why do you think so many writers and artists have come to Hillsboro? Because it, it's a little bit unusual, don't you think? Partly it has a small town charm. Not just charm, but the beauty of being able to walk everywhere. I grew up watching Mayberry, and I, I feel it's a little touch of that. For our next stop, Stephen and I head to Purple Crow Books to meet with owner Sharon Wheeler and local author Lee Smith. Oh, what a great bookstore! An independent bookstore, yes. which we're so proud of. Mm -hmm. It's been 10 years? 10 years, so it'll be 10 years in November. What was that spark that said, you know what, let's open up a bookstore? I always wanted a bookstore. My husband died and I took the chance to kind of recreate myself. I think that this bookstore, along with other things, 
is part of the community. And the authors here are incredible. They're very supportive. They are the most generously spirited group of people I've ever known. Really, yeah. it's amazing to be around them. Well, a lot of this has to do, though, with Sharon herself, as you can tell, because she's made this a very important gathering place. And what a great way, too, to give back to those writers by providing them with a platform. For a bite to eat, Stephen and I meet with Aaron Vandermark, the head chef of Panchuto. This looks delicious and it smells amazing. So this is pretty typical of what we might do on any particular night at the restaurant, which is deal with what is available this week, right now, like within miles of the restaurant. And so in this case, there's a tele tele noodle made out of uh, flour from Lindley Mills and some local eggs. And uh, the first asparagus of the year showed up yesterday. So this is the first cutting, which is pretty special. The idea for this dish in general is really just about kind of exhibiting that more than anything. So it's pretty straightforward. Really simple, but also really special in that like it is about today. Um, and so there's a quick poached egg on top, some tarragon. Uh, Herchin Meadows just brought down a couple hours ago. So it's all locally sourced ingredients. That's the way we operate. It gives, for me, I think for the cooks, it gives the cooking meaning. There is you know, value in those relationships, and that really informs kind of our process for how any dish comes together. No matter how you say it, it's delicious. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Wow. You yeah. picked a great spot. Before we go forward, what do you think about my shirt? I wore it special for bro. you. Hillsboro, Hillsboro, yes. Yes. I'm about that, Hillsboro. This is Mount Okanichi. The Okanichi tribe, the first Native Americans in this area, uh, are known for having settled here. And it's the highest point in the county. I love it. Come here with friends just about every other week. And the next thing I want to show you is the overlook. I find there's a creative energy and spirit that I just love. And it's a place to be quiet, to kind of feel, and, yeah. and to look, look out and look in. In Hillsboro, you're surrounded by stories from the past. And in the present, the story of this small town is still being crafted. Some use a brush and a canvas. Others use a pen and paper. Or pots, pans, and just the right ingredients. And for all of them, Hillsboro is their home, community, and creative inspiration. Yeah.